Sleeping Beauty from Walt Disney's motion picture Sleeping Beauty from the story by Charles Perrault. In a faraway land long ago lived King Stefan and his fair queen. For many years they had longed for a child and finally their wish was granted. A daughter was born and they called her Aurora after the goddess of dawn for she filled their lives with sunshine. To celebrate her birth, a great holiday was proclaimed throughout the kingdom. Knights and ladies, town people and peasants, all dressed in their finest clothes and bringing gifts came to the palace at the king's invitation to see the new baby and wish her well. King Hubert, who ruled the neighboring country, arrived with his young son, Prince Philip. The two kings had long dreamed of uniting their lands by the marriage of their children, and on this occasion they announced the betrothal of the infant Princess Aurora to Prince Philip. Suddenly gliding down a shaft of sunlight that slanted into the great hall, the tiny figures of three good fairies appeared. Waving their magic wands, they floated over to examine the display of the baby's presence. They approached the cradle to bestow their gifts on Princess Aurora. Little princess, my gift shall be the gift of beauty, said Flora. Her wand showered sparkles of fairy dust. Tiny princess, my gift shall be the gift of song, said Fauna. But just as the third fairy, Meriwether, was about to bless the infant with her gift of happiness, a wind blew the castle doors open. There was a blinding flash of lightning, and Maleficent, the evil witch, stood in the center of the hall, furious at not being invited to the festivities. Raising her arms, she announced, I too shall bestow a gift on the child. The princess shall indeed grow in grace and beauty, beloved by all who know her. But before the sun sets on her sixteenth birthday, she will prick her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel and die. The poor queen lifted her baby, lifted her baby from the cradle and held her close as if to protect her from the witch's terrible words. The guards encircled Maleficent and lunged at her with their spears, but the powerful magic she summoned surrounded herself with flames and she vanished in a puff of smoke. Meriwether, who still had her gift to give, quickly waved her wand above the baby, saying, Do not despair, O king and queen. Though I have not the power to undo this fearful curse, I can help. Then, as her wand created magic pictures in the air, she chanted, Sweet princess, if through this wicked witch's trick the spindle should your finger prick, a ray of hope there still may be in this gift I give to thee. Not in death, but just in sleep, this fateful prophecy you'll keep, and from this slumber you shall wake, when true love's kiss the spell shall break. King Stephon, still fearful for his daughter's life, decreed that every spinning wheel and spindle in the kingdom should on that very day be burned. A huge bonfire was built in the courtyard, and every spinning wheel was destroyed. The three fairies were not sure that that was enough to keep the princess safe from harm. They persuaded the king and queen to let them hide the baby princess. They would take her to live deep in the forest, all of them disguised as peasants. And so, for sixteen years, the princess, called Briar Rose by the three good fairies, grew up with them, hidden away in a woodcutter's cottage, with birds and forest creatures for her friends. Maleficent tried in vain to find the girl, but the good fairies kept her whereabouts, whereabouts well concealed. All these years they lived as mortals, never using their magic for fear that if they did, Maleficent would be able to trace them by its telltale grow, glow. But on the princess's sixteenth birthday, Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether wanted to surprise her with a cake and a new dress. They sent her out to pick berries in the woods, and they set to work, baking a cake and sewing a dress. The cake was a disaster. The dress was awful. I'm going to get our magic wands, Meriwether declared. You know, I think she's right, Fauna agreed. It was the only way they had ever made anything. The wands sent their rays of colored magic shooting around the room, and soon turned the cake into a pastry cook's masterpiece, the dress into a beautiful gown. Unfortunately, the colored sparkles from their magic drifted up the chimney and out onto the sky above the cottage. There, Maleficent's raven, who had been hunting for the princess, saw the magic traces and flew back to his mistress to report that he had found the fairy's hiding place at last. Meanwhile, Prince Philip, who happened to be riding through the forest, heard a sweet song. 
Searching for the singer, he found Briar Rose dancing with the woodland creatures, and he joined them. As they sang together, he and the girl fell in love on the instant. But it was growing late, and Briar Rose had to leave. Will I see you again? the eager prince asked her. Come to the cottage in the glen this evening, said the girl. I will be there with my three guardians. And she hurried home to tell Flora, Fauna, and Merryweather the wonderful news. The fairies had news of their own for the girl. You are really the Princess Aurora, my dear, began Flora, and tonight we are taking you back to your father, King Stefan. Sadly, Briar Rose allowed herself to be led away from the cottage before Prince Philip came for their meeting. The fairies brought her to her room in the castle, where she threw herself on the bed sobbing. Let her have a few moments alone, said Flora, as they closed the door behind them. Poor dear. King Stefan and King Hubert had been celebrating the return of the princess and toasting the future union of their children and their kingdoms. At that moment, the arrival of Prince Philip interrupted the, their revelries. Father, he announced excitedly, I have just met the girl I am going to marry. Not Princess Aurora, but a peasant girl. On hearing this, King Hubert raged at his son. When that did no good, he pleaded and cajoled, all to no avail. Prince Philip insisted he would marry the girl he loved and he galloped off to meet Briar Rose at her cottage in the woods, leaving his father in despair. All this time, Princess Aurora had been weeping alone in her room. There, Maleficent, disguised as a wisp of smoke, cast a spell on the girl and led her to a secret room in which there was a magic spinning wheel, the only one left in the entire land. What can this be? Aurora wondered, and then she heard a voice commanding, Touch the spindle! Her hand reached out to the spindle, it pricked her finger, and at once the princess fell to the floor in a swoon. When the three fairies found her stretched out on the stone floor, they berated themselves for having left the princess unguarded even for a minute. They carried her to the finest apartment in the palace and laid her on a bed embroidered with gold and silver. The princess was as beautiful as a little angel, her cheeks still rosy, her lips coral. And indeed, they thought her eyes, although her eyes were shut, she breathed very softly, and they knew she was not dead. Come, said Flora, we'll put everyone to sleep until the princess awakens. The fairies sprinkled sleep dust on King Stepan. His queen, King Hubert, the soldiers and guards, the flag carriers, the servants, even on the fountains in the courtyard and the candles in the banquet hall. Then they flew off to find Prince Philip, for only he could awaken the princess. When Philip arrived at the cottage in the forest, Maleficent's bench henchmen were awaiting him. They chained him and locked him in the witch's dungeon, where he was taunted by Maleficent. She showed him the picture of his peasant girl, Briar Rose, asleep in the tower of King Stefan's castle, and told him she was the Princess Aurora, doomed to sleep until his kiss awakened her. Then, laughing cruelly, Maleficent left the prince tugging at his chains, locked in the dungeon. It was there the three fairies found him and released him. Arming the prince with the mighty sword of truth and the enchanted shield of virtue, they helped him escape Maleficent's castle. When Prince Philip reached the castle of King Stefan, he found the walls overgrown with a forest of thorns, while a fire-sprouting dragon, Maleficent in disguise, guarded the drawbridge. The fairies sprinkled magic dust on the prince's sword, chanting, Now sword of truth, fly swift and sure, that evil die and good endure. At which the sword flew straight into the dragon's heart, slaying the beast, who turned back into Maleficent as it died. The prince ran up the steps of the tower two at a time, past all the sleeping courtiers, until he reached the chamber where Princess Aurora, his beloved Briar Rose, lay. Gently he kissed her. The princess awakened, smiled at Philip, and the whole room lit up. The fountains in the courtyard started to play again. Candles flamed once more. The court awakened. Trumpets sounded from the balcony as the prince and princess walked down the grand stairway hand in hand. Then, before the delighted eyes of King Stefan and the Queen and King Hubert, Prince Philip and Princess Aurora began to dance to the strains of a romantic waltz. Watching from the musician's balcony, Fauna started to cry. Why, Fauna? Flora exclaimed. Whatever is the matter now? Fauna, sobbing, said, Oh, I just love happy endings. And indeed, 
Philip and Aurora lived happily forever after. <laughs>